Welcome back everybody to another Python Pandas tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over how to delete data frame rows and columns. We have touched on this topic in previous tutorials. However, in this tutorial we're going to go into a little bit more detail. We've gone ahead and imported Pandas and we have created a very simple data frame. And this is what the data frame looks like. For our first example, we're going to use the DEL keyword and that will allow us to choose a column from the data frame and delete it. We've gone ahead and created a new data frame here, which is a copy of our original data frame. So we're gonna use that new data frame one, and let's say that we want to delete column A. All we have to do is type out DEL, reference the data frame, data frame one, column A. Let's go ahead and see how data frame one has changed. Let's run it. So you can see here is our original data frame, and here we have deleted column A, and you can see it's gone. Next up, let's delete a data frame column using pop. Once again, we're going to use a copy of our original data frame. We've assigned that to data frame two. Let's reference data frame two dot pop. And the column we want to pop or remove is C. Let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see the columns A, B, D, and E remain and C has been removed. In our next example, we're going to use drop. So let's go ahead and take a look at pop just so we can see the differences. Here is the description. Pop allows you to return an item and drop from frame. Okay, moving on to drop. Let's go ahead and reference our data frame three. Let's use a dot, drop, and for the first argument, we're gonna put in B. That's the column we want to drop. Now, to make sure that it drops the column, for the second argument, we're going to put in axis equals 1. And we want this change to happen in place. Okay, so just a quick refresher. We're using copies of this data frame. So this is what it looks like. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at data frame 3 and see how it has changed. Okay, so we used drop to drop column B, and recall, to make sure it drops the column, we assign one to the axis. So you can see B has been dropped. Okay, so in this example, we dropped one column, column B. But let's say we wanted to drop multiple columns. For that example, we're gonna use data frame four. Once again, dot drop, and in this case, for the first argument, we're going to use a list. So we'll put our columns that we want to drop in square brackets. And let's say that we want to drop columns D and E. To make sure it drops the columns, we'll assign one to the axis, and we want this change to happen in place. So when we run this and take a look, we should only be left with columns A, B, and C. That looks good. Okay, you can also delete multiple columns using slice syntax. So let's go over an example of that. Let's go ahead and reference our data frame, data frame five. Once again, dot drop. For our first argument here, we're going to reference data frame five again, dot columns. And here we're going to use our slice syntax. So let's start with the index two and then go all the way to the end. Axis equals one, in place, true. Let's take a look. And you can see we dropped starting at index two, going all the way to the end. And what we're left with are columns A and B. Okay, for our next example, let's go over how we can delete or drop rows. Let's go ahead and use data frame six. 
dot drop for the first argument, let's put in a list of the row indexes we want to drop. So let's drop 0 and 1. Now here for the axis, instead of 1, we want 0 to make sure that we access the rows. And let's just do true for the end place. Now since we're using a copy of the original data frame, let's go ahead and take a look at that to make sure we know what the original looked like. Now let's go ahead and take a look at data frame 6 and see how it has changed. Let's run it. So here is the original data frame. We went ahead and assigned a copy of that to data frame 6. We wanted to go ahead and drop rows 0 and 1 from data frame 6. So we use data frame 6.drop. We put in those rows. Instead of 1 for the axis, we put in 0. And in place equals true. And you'll notice that rows 0 and 1 are gone from data frame 6. For our next example, we're going to go over how you can drop rows using the slice syntax. Very similar to how you can drop columns. Let's go ahead and use data frame 7 dot drop. Let's use data frame 7 again dot index. Let's use our slice syntax. We'll start at index 2 and go till the end. Axis equals 0 and in place equals true. Let's take a look. So this is what our original data frame looked like. We assigned a copy of that data frame to data frame 7. We use data frame 7.drop. We use index to drop the rows. Axis equals 0. And we started at index 2 going till the end, which leaves us with this remaining data. OK. Moving on, for our next example, instead of using a copy of our original data frame, we've created a new data frame. Let's clean this up a little bit. And this data frame includes some cars and their corresponding speeds. So let's just take a quick look. We have a column for the cars and their speeds. Now in these examples, we won't technically be removing anything. However, when you use Boolean selection, it allows you to select certain things you want and put them in a new data frame or vice versa, meaning that you can get rid of certain things that you don't want. So for this first example, let's say we just want the top speeds. So we're going to go ahead and reference data frame 8. Then we're going to use our square bracket syntax and reference data frame 8 again. So this will allow us to see the entire data frame. Now we want to go ahead and reference column speed. And we only want speeds greater than 160. So just to make sure these all show up, let's go ahead and put them in a print. And let's take a look. So here we have our original data frame with all the cars and their speeds. Now we've gone ahead and used Boolean selection using the speed column with cars that have a speed of greater than 160. And we assign that to the variable top speeds. And that would be this data. So if we look at this data frame, we can see the only cars with speeds greater than 160 are D and E, and that is what is returned. Now you could do something very similar for the lower speeds. All you have to do to get the opposite or the reverse is to use this little tilde. And you can think of that as a not. Okay. So in this case, we want all of the cars with speeds that are not greater than 160. We've assigned that to lower speeds. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, now notice here, and this is a good thing to point out, our lower speeds data frame is not returned. Now we put in that inverse or not symbol, but in order for this to work, we need to go ahead and wrap this code here in round brackets. Now let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, so once again, this was our original data frame. 
we wanted to return only the lower speeds or to get rid of the higher speeds. To do that, we reference data frame 8, and in square brackets, we put this little tilde. Then in round brackets, we reference data frame 8, we access the speed column, and we put in our criteria. And what is returned are the cars with speeds that are not greater than 160. Okay, let's go over one last example. And this is another example where you're probably not technically deleting or removing something. It's just another way to get the data that you want and only the data that you want. So once again, we're going to use a copy of our original data frame, assign that to data frame nine. Let's reference data frame nine and let's use loc. Let's go ahead and specify the rows and the columns that we want to keep, thus getting rid of everything else. So let's keep rows two through four and columns A and B. And let's just go ahead and assign that to data frame 10. Let's go ahead and take a look. And as we mentioned, we wanted to keep rows two through four. We have rows two, three, four, and columns A and B. A and B. So we got rid of rows zero and one and columns C, D, and E. That's all we have for this Python tutorial. We will be doing many more tutorials in the near future. Join us for those and we'll see you next time.